Hi, I'm Diana, and my relationship with my mom has always been pretty interesting. You see, my mom is in jail, and has been for about 10 years now. I live with my older sister, who has done her best to look after me, but it's just not the same as having a mom around. It isn't her fault that she's in jail. My dad didn't treat her very well. One night, she took the money out of their joint account and ran away for her own protection. She even had to leave me behind to try and escape him, but the police caught her trying to leave the country with the money. The court didn't believe her and she ended up being charged with fraud and being sentenced to years in prison. I try my best to keep my mom happy. I bring her presents and I cook her favorite cakes and bring them to her in prison, but they never seem to make her happy. She's so unhappy in jail that I just can't do anything to fix it. Well, at least she is one of the most popular women with the other inmates, as she told me. They even call her Rocky as she's so tough. No one will dare to mess with her. So, with Mother's Day coming up, I knew I had to do something really special to make her happy, and I had the best idea. I thought I would do something different, and something big. I hired a plane to do some skywriting in the sky above her prison. I thought when she and her prison friend saw it, she would be so happy. And I was going to surprise her by skydiving out of the plane, too. When it got to the day of my skydive, I got really nervous. I don't like heights. When I was up in the plane, the man literally had to push me out, I was so scared. But once in the sky, I was having so much fun. I really started to enjoy it. As I was falling to earth, I was so happy. I could see all the inmates in the yard below and knew that my mom would be there watching. I looked up and saw the plane in the sky riding in pink smoke. Happy Mother's Day, Rocky. I was so pleased. Then I pressed the button on my backpack and it released more pink smoke, my mom's favorite color. I was so excited. Mom would definitely see me now. But I hadn't anticipated one thing. I couldn't see. There was smoke everywhere. I started coughing and spluttering and my eyes were sore. Then I started to worry. I knew that I had to release my parachute, but it was so smoky I couldn't see the pull cord. I started feeling all over myself trying to find the cord, but I just couldn't get a hold of it. Then I looked below me and I was near the ground. I knew if I didn't pull the cord soon, then I would be in big trouble. I finally found the cord and pulled it. I felt the parachute open up, but it was too late. I was traveling too fast and I was going to hit the floor with a bang. I closed my eyes and braced myself. I landed on my back with lots of women in orange jumpsuits gathered around me. Then some prison guards ran over to me. It was pretty scary, some of them had guns. There was a lot of shouting going on. I looked around. I couldn't see my mom anywhere. I became aware that I couldn't feel my legs. I looked down and realized they were sticking out at funny angles. I let out a scream and then passed out. I woke up in the hospital with lots of doctors and nurses working on me. There was blood everywhere. I must have passed out again as I woke up a few days later with both of my legs in plaster. It turned out my parachute had opened, but I still hit the ground really hard. I had landed right in the middle of the prison yard. I should have died, but by some miracle I had only broken my legs. The next day I was discharged from the hospital. I rolled outside and waited for my sister to come and collect me, but she didn't turn up. Instead, a police van pulled up in front of me. An officer got out and asked me my name. When I said who I was, he told me that I was under arrest. I was wheeled into the back of the van and driven off. I was so scared. I had never gotten into trouble in my life. They wouldn't even tell me why I was being arrested. We got to a large building and stopped outside. I was wheeled in and they finally told me. I was being arrested for breaking into the women's prison. I told them that it was an accident, that I was trying to surprise my mom for Mother's Day, but they didn't believe me. I asked where I was going, but they didn't answer. They just wheeled me into a room where two men were waiting. I realized they were prison guards. I was being put in prison. After changing into my orange jumpsuit, I was led through a door into a big cafeteria. The prison officer told me sarcastically that I was lucky as I had just arrived in time for lunch. He laughed and left me. All the prisoners in the room turned around and stared at me. This really tough looking woman walked up to me and looked like she was going to start threatening me. 
Before she could say anything, I told her that she'd better watch out, as my mom was rocky and if she messed with me, she'd have to answer to her. The woman's tough face dropped, then she started laughing. She told me that the nickname Rocky was ironic. She wasn't tough. She was a wimp and a liar who everyone hated. I then got really angry at the woman and said that my mom would be out of the prison soon anyway, that she didn't even deserve to be in prison with her and everyone else. She started laughing even more and said that my mom was in jail for child abandonment and she wasn't innocent. I couldn't believe it. Why was she saying that? After eating the worst meal I had ever had, I wheeled around the prison until I found mom. I asked her about what the woman said. She said that yes, she had abandoned me. She had never wanted me and she'd lied about why she'd gone to prison. She had stolen my dad's money and had left me in a car to go and start a new life. He was the innocent one in this, not her. She said that I was such a stupid girl, I always believed her lies. Then she told me that she was going to be released in two months. So she would be in the real world and I would be the one stuck in prison. Then I saw who she really was. All my life I had idolized her and tried to impress her and I could have died trying to make her happy and it was a lie. Well, I had had enough. For the next few weeks in prison I kept my head low. Luckily, people left me alone. I used my time to think up a plan. A plan for revenge. One day, my sister came to visit me. When she arrived, she already knew of my plan. She'd always known what my mom was really like, it was just that I'd spent so many years thinking my mom was wonderful, I'd refused to believe it. When the guards weren't looking, she slipped a small package into my cast. Later on that day, I waited until mom left her cell. We hadn't spoken for weeks, so I had to sneak in. I got the package out of my cast. It was lots of packets of cigarettes. I took one out, then hid the rest inside her pillow. Then I lit the remaining cigarette and let the smoke fill up the room. I chucked it under her bed, then got out of there as quickly as possible. I waited a while, then I told a guard I could smell something funny coming down the hall. The guard sniffed the air. He could smell the smoke. My plan was working. He would find the cigarettes and think she was selling them to the other inmates and she would get a longer sentence. That would serve her right for lying to me for all these years. But as the guard ran in, the fire alarm went off. I must have started a fire. We all had to evacuate. We were escorted outside as the prison went up in flames. But the big yard we'd been in had led out to an open gate. Some of the inmates saw it and made a run for it. There were so many people on the run that the guards couldn't stop them. And one of the inmates escaping was mom. As she ran out to her freedom, she turned and gave me a wicked smile. I didn't try to get away. I was innocent, and besides, I was in a wheelchair. But I was so angry seeing my mom getting away. The fire was put out pretty quickly, and we were all moved back into the prison. Twenty inmates had escaped, and over the next few days, they were all found and brought back to jail. The only prisoner they couldn't locate was my mom. A week after that was my court date. I was let off with a warning as they understood that it was a stunt gone wrong, not a break-in attempt. As the verdict was read out, I looked around the courtroom. I could see someone I recognized watching from the back. It was my mom. She was wearing a wig and a fake nose, but it was definitely her. I moved back in with my sister and life got back to normal. But I was always expecting my mom to turn up again one day. About a year later, there was a knock on the door late at night. I opened it and my mom was there. She pushed past me to get in. She begged me to help her. She'd been on the run for so long now. She looked different. She'd had plastic surgery to change how she looked. She claimed to be working as a spy, helping to rid the world of injustice and helping others like a superhero minus the powers. But there was a problem. If she was caught and taken back to jail, her good work would have to end. She needed me to go drive her to the border where someone was going to meet her and help her escape the country where she could carry on doing good. I agreed to help. She hid in the back of my car and I put a blanket over her. I drove in the dark with my lights out until we reached our destination. The men were there to meet us, but when I opened the boot and pulled the blanket off of her, she saw it wasn't the man she expected to see. It was the police. She looked at me in shock. I smiled to her and said, that serves you right, Rocky. Hi, 
My name is Vivian, and recently I've really been struggling with acne. If you also have acne, you've probably tried to treat it at some point. It all started one morning. I woke up to see I had a horrible acne breakout. It was so embarrassing. Pimples covered my entire face. Thankfully, it was a Saturday, and I didn't have to go to school. Phew. I could just imagine what the snobby girls who hang out at the front of the school doors would say if they saw my face. I went online to look for homemade recipes for curing acne. Sounded like a good idea, right? I found a recipe that seemed legit, and I was pretty much ready to do anything at that point to get rid of my acne. So I put all my faith in this recipe. I mean, the website was pretty popular, and the recipe had loads of positive comments. What could go wrong? The recipe called for some food ingredients as well as essential oils and witch hazel. It required egg whites and honey. Luckily, I was staying at my grandma's, and she absolutely devours eggs. So I headed to the kitchen to get some. Sure enough, there were eggs in the fridge. There was also a pot of honey on the counter. Jackpot. I mean, I didn't want to go to the shop for the ingredients with my face looking like this, so I was relieved that my grandma had everything I needed. She even had the oils in a little box in her bathroom, and witch hazel too. It was clearly my lucky day. I went back into the kitchen, bringing the oils and witch hazel. My grandma was there and asked me what I was up to. I didn't really feel like explaining, so I just said I'm applying a mask that uses honey and eggs to cure acne. She laughed and said, "What a great idea!" I felt so happy to hear this. Then I took out a big plastic mixing bowl and a large spoon. I read the recipe and added all the ingredients. I stirred it until I felt everything was mixed up properly. I then applied the mask to my face. After a few minutes, I started to feel a burning and itching sensation on my face. Hmm, maybe it's meant to feel like that. It probably just means that the mixture is working and getting rid of my acne. I mean, what other reason could there be? Even though my face was in pain, I decided to suck it up and I left the mask on for as long as I could handle. It annoyed me that I needed to go to such extreme measures just because I'm unlucky enough to have acne. Why can't I just have flawless skin like my friends Jessica and Amy? Life is so unfair. Finally, I couldn't stand it any more. I ran to the sink to wash off the mask. I splashed my face with lots of cold water and scrubbed it with my hands, pulling off globs of the mixture. I then rushed upstairs to get a wet washcloth. When I looked in the mirror, I almost screamed. My face was so red, more so than you could possibly imagine. It was also puffy. I called my grandma, and she came running. And when she saw me, she immediately called my parents, as she wasn't sure what to do. She wanted to call an ambulance, but I refused. I told her that my mother has a solution for everything, and I'll just wait for her. But my skin was so irritated and painful by then. When my parents arrived, my mother tried to calm my skin down by putting some calming cream on my horrible rash. We waited about fifteen minutes. It was seriously getting worse, though. My parents drove me to the ER right away. After seeing a nurse and waiting for a while, we were asked to come in. The doctor looked at my face and said it looked as if the rash was caused by a bad allergic reaction. When I told him about my mask, he said that the lemongrass oil and the tea tree oil were the most likely culprits. He also recommended I go to an allergy specialist to get tested because I might have an egg allergy as well. Even though the doctor was able to ease the pain and the rash on my face, I still felt horrible because the blemishes were even worse than they were to begin with. I was so upset to the point where I couldn't hold my tears back, and I started crying like a baby in front of the doctor. Surprisingly, the doctor was not taken aback by my dramatic reaction. He explained that it is a problem that many teenagers like me suffer from at this age. He then told me I should never be embarrassed by it. I laughed, even though I was still kind of upset. It was ridiculous to end up in the emergency room over some stupid acne. My grandma felt bad as well for telling me it was a good recipe, but we all tried to convince her it wasn't her fault. The doctor prescribed me some ways to help me control the acne, which he felt was safe. 
and I reassured him that I wouldn't be taking the matter of my health into my own hands again, that's for sure. 